TJ Gidla has quickly become one of the most fascinating prospects in the 2024 NHL draft. Of course, the son of NHL legend Jerome Gidla, TJ is dominating the WHL, the WHL playoffs recently, and has really been skyrocketing his stock. He went from a player that could have been in the first round of the start of the year to a player that could be inside the top five when it's all said and done. So how good is TJ Ginla? What are his strengths and weaknesses? How good could he be at the NHL level? And who could ultimately end up drafting him at the 2024 NHL draft? Well, today we're gonna be answering all those questions and more, so make sure you watch till the end for that. And hit that subscribe button for more hockey content just like this all throughout the year. Now, folks, I have been wanting to talk about TJ Ginla for a while now specifically because there is so much to talk about with this guy. He is quickly becoming one of my favorite players in this draft. And ladies and gentlemen, what we are seeing him do in the WHL playoffs this year is simply exceptional. And we're starting to see his draft stock rise a lot. And this is the big one too. Elite prospects coming out with their new top 32 April draft rankings. And you can see Celebrini, Demidov, Lindstrom, Levshinov, and Perek as the top five. But right outside at number six, ahead of Cadden, Dickinson, Salaya, Buham, Iserman, Land, Tej, Aginla. This was really the highest we have ever seen Aginla in any draft rankings, but it's been slowly turning that direction. And now we're starting to see a lot of places, a lot of people putting Aginla pretty high. And it's really not all that difficult to see why. With the way that he plays, the stats he's been able to put up with Kelowna this year, it makes a lot of sense. You also consider that he's one of the youngest players in this draft class, turning 18 all the way in August, and the product here is pretty enticing. As a power forward at six foot, 185 pounds, it's interesting looking at his season over the last really couple of years in the WHL. You see last year with Seattle in his first big WHL campaign, he played 48 games, only getting six goals, 12 assists for 18 points on a stacked Seattle team. That really didn't have much room for. But he ends up getting traded to Kelowna. And with the Rockets this year in 64 games, he has 47 goals, 37 assists, 84 points. And look at those playoffs, man. In six games in the first round versus Wenatchee, he had eight goals, three assists for 11 points. If it weren't for some 21-year-old named Briley Wood on Wenatchee, then TJ Love would be tied with Andrew Crystal for the most points in the WHL playoffs this year insane now as you guys know i actually do think that watching the games is important so we're going to take a look at some highlights my thoughts on what i've seen with aginla this year and why i actually could see a situation where he becomes a top five draft pick but before we get into that let's first talk about today's sponsor for a minute here in sleeper fantasy now if you guys don't already sleeper fantasy is the best place to turn your daily hockey knowledge into real paydays whether that's going through drafts and going through different leagues and setting up with your buddies or just going through nhl picks every day there's so many options with sleeper and today we're going to go through the sleeper picks with three different ones today first i got Sidney crosby more than 0.5 goals he has been a man on a mission three goal or at least a goal in three of his last four games i think crosby's going to continue to get it done i also got william carlson more than one 0.5 points he has been really consistent this year for vegas and of course his points over his last four and then i also got elias Pettersson less than 0.5 goals he's kind of gone a little bit cold really over these past few months since 2024 began so i'm gonna go on that as well putting ten dollars down to win 49 if you want to join me on Sleeper, go in the description, click on the link, and use promo code GRAV on your first deposit, and you can get up to a $500 match. If you put in $20, you'll get $20 bucks free. Of course, Sleeper is a big reason why I've been able to make more videos for you guys. So hopefully you enjoy, and thank you so much to Sleeper for sponsoring today's video. Now let's take a look at TJ Gintla's game, because there is so much to sink our teams into here. Now, there is a lot of film from this last series of Wenatchee to look at because Aginla was a beast. But literally in the first minute and a half of this entire series in game one, Aginla was already cooking and the puck was coming loose from the slot into the corner boards. And of course, Aginla is going to be battling here with an opponent. Look how he's able to deceive the opponent, thinking he's going to go in a different direction. It looks like Aginla might be trying to swerve, but then he goes left and it's an absolutely perfect play. He ends up trying to deke out another defender even though this goal was a little bit lucky going off of the defenseman in front still again look created his own luck it's something that might be oversaid, but you can tell that Aginla is a son of an NHL legend, a class act like Jerome. The way he plays the game, it just spills into every part of his play style. Now, before two, Kelowna and on the power play, Aginla would make no mistake. Another massive part of Aginla's game is that lethal shot. He's quickly become one of the best goal scorers in this entire draft class. And you can see Aginla part right here as the play develops. It goes along the boards, and of course, he ends up disappearing a little bit here, but it gets back 
back to the point, then again, like, comes through and absolutely shatters that puck. It was insane how fast that was. Look at this shot. He literally put everything into it. But it is a lethal weapon and one of Ginla's biggest strengths. One part, though, that I think Ginla has really improved on over the year is the agility, the quickness, especially in transition. This goal was pretty freaking sweet. You can see the play developing here, and instantly, Ginla is able to find the seam and is able to get that tap-in goal to make it 1-1. A brilliant effort, some brilliant speed, and that's what I want to see Ginla using even more. It seems like his Jets have really improved over the past couple of years, and he was able to showcase it on that goal. And then in the next game, we had a pretty similar goal to the one a couple of ga uh, goals ago. And you can see another stretch pass. But again, let's able to find that little bit of space on the left side and just turn on the Jets again, beating the defender at a perfect shot, too. It's unreal. But like I mentioned before, one of the more translatable parts to me in Aginla's game is the way he's able to protect the puck. And it's not just about using his stick, getting him in the right positions. It's also about using his body. And what's really good on this play is how he's able to rush up the ice. But look how he uses his leg to almost block any chance of the defender getting a stick or getting any type of contact on that puck. He stretches his leg out to protect that opportunity, and it ends up resulting in a pretty sick goal. Now, this next goal was huge. Winatsu was up 4-3 with 50 seconds to go in the third. And it's just another great fundamental play here by, by Aginla. And you can see Kelowna has the puck at the point. But I want you to zero in on Aginla's stick. Look how wide open it is. Nobody is really covering him in front of the net, which obviously is a great thing. But it's because of Aginla's shiftiness. He's able to take advantage of it. Look at how he plays this puck. How he's able to just keep his stick on the ice and have an easy goal but it's because of the positioning it's because of the craftiness and the fundamentals of that play even happened in the first place but folks we're talking about fundamentals i absolutely adore this next goal you can see here again look coming in on the four check on the wing and how he's able to play the puck great physicality getting it to his teammate in the open space a great pass there but look how again is in front of the net look how he's swerving not going too far keeping it simple puck and stick on the ice and again, Lem makes it a 2-0 game. Okay, I love that last goal, but I lied. This is actually my favorite one. In the same game, normally, again, Lem and Crystal don't play with each other all too often, but this was a rare circumstance. You can see the defender here has a lot of time to work with in his own defensive zone, but look at again, Lem, look at the four check, look at the intensity, stealing the puck, getting it right to Crystal in front. What a friggin' play. The four checking is a massive part of again, Lem's game, but you saw it on that goal just how competitive he was, how he didn't even lose an inch. I mean, he was right there on the defender, making life difficult, and it led to a nasty goal. But it's kind of hard not to like TJ Genla, not to like the game that he plays, the way he reads the game, the way he goes out there and battles every single night. This is going to be a guy that translates incredibly well to the NHL level. He doesn't rely on his teammates. He doesn't rely on lucky bounces. He is everywhere on the ice and in the right positions constantly around the net. That is something that is going to really aid him at the NHL level when things get even more pacey, when things get even more physical. Again, it has the fundamentals to get past that and be an impact forward. And you look at where Jerome McGinley was drafted as well, 11th overall by the Stars in 1995. There is an almost 100% chance at this point that Tej Aginla goes higher. And Aginla for a long time was pretty penciled in around that 15 to 12 range in my rankings. And I thought I was pretty high on him a few months ago, putting him around that range. But what he's done since then, I think a lot of people have woken up to just how effective he's been all year. I don't think Aginla is playing a demonstrably better than he had at the start of the season. He was always at a pretty fantastic level, but now he's proving it in the playoffs. Now he's proving it in these big situations, in big moments, in big games, and it has consistently stayed true. Now that we've talked about how good Aginla has been in the playoffs, how good he's performed, let's talk about some of those skill sets, how I could see that translating, and ultimately who I could see drafting him in June. First on the puck skills side of things, I think for Aginla, it's pretty decent. I wouldn't say he's an electric deeker or anything, but I think he can pull out a move here and then. I'm going to give him a straight B for that, but it won't be something special by any means. Next up is the skating. I would say in ways, again, love this is something that, again, has gotten a lot better throughout the year. I think there are still some issues with the, maybe the edge work on transitions. Sometimes I think there's 
It's the times where he might be need more agility outside of just being a straight line skater. But I think besides that, he gets in the right positions pretty well and can bounce back physically too. I'm going to give him skating as well, just a solid B. I also talk about that NHL IQ. That to me is huge as well. To me with the IQ, it's offensively at a fantastic level. To me, this is a guy that, again, always knows where to be. And I'm going to give a straight A to that. In terms of the shooting, got to give this a straight A as well. Maybe even an A+. Plus. I mean, again, this is one of the best shooters in this draft and consistently has been this year also in terms of the passing this is something that i think again has also gotten a lot better at just the playmaking the vision on the ice even though there are some inconsistencies there i think it's still pretty good i give it maybe a c plus or a b minus and then in terms of the defense this might be the biggest issue of again in my opinion there are times where he hasn't isn't as defensively engaged as he is offensively especially physically there are times where i want to see him use his body more be more attentive on pucks getting pucks back and that to me is a little bit of a weakness so i'd give that more of like a d plus maybe c minus and then last but not least in that physicality again the obvious he has some fantastic traits i think because of his size i don't think he'll ever be a true unreal power forward consistently but i think he'll have those traits and have those responsibilities and still be able to survive with it I'm going to give it a straight B as well. But to me at this point, that's kind of what I see again Ginla being. Being this great maybe second line, maybe first line guy if you want to have a goal scoring threat, a fantastic power play presence, a guy that will again use that physicality in a big way, be a great net front guy, and score around 50, 60 points a year, which is pretty solid. A great player to add on to your roster, and you'll take it wherever you get him. But to me, that is the question. Top five, top six, I'm not sure if I quite see that with Ginla. To me, there are players that bring bigger potential more value at the next level but I see again love being a very safe guy to pick he is going to be a guy, a guy that works hard is in the right positions scores goals at a great rate and it's hard to really pass up on that I think it will be especially interesting though on draft day to see who goes higher TJ Ginla or Berkeley Catton and it's kind of interesting to see maybe the difference of opinion on these two players because I've seen Catton stock drop while TJ Ginla's has risen and I would say in Catton's case he has definitely a much better ceiling this is a guy that plays at a higher pace offensively is all around the ice a great distributor of the puck and that is going to be major strengths going forward but in Ginla's case I could see where you you would prefer the physicality you prefer the net front presence you prefer the goal scoring in TJ Ginla's case and I could see why but now let's talk about what team could potentially draft him because now with the talk of him potentially going top five in this draft, you now look at the top five teams and of course, are they just setting us up to have TJ Ginla go to the Montreal Canadiens? You have to ask the question. At this point with how Aginla is playing, how he's been as a player, I would be shocked if he goes outside the top 10. I think the name value already gave his stock quite a bit of weight, but how he's playing, how he's really putting himself up in the playoffs, I think a lot of teams are going to end up loving. Honestly, though, I think the Montreal pick is where you start to have conversations about Teach Aginla, but I think he's more likely going to go around this range. And you also see where the Calgary Flames are in the draft order. And let's be honest, if, if he goes to Calgary, it's an automatic lock. Especially if the Flames are outside the top six, top seven, and they don't take Aginla, if they pass up on another Iggy, it would basically be sacrilegious. So this could depend on if Calgary drops or rises in this draft order, but they've lost three straight. They're two, eight, and zero over the last 10. So there is a possibility that they slip even more, potentially maybe even going into the number seven or number six spot. Imagine Calgary selecting a Ginla number. But honestly, I think that's where we're at. I could even see a situation where Arizona likes a Ginla. I could see a situation where Ottawa likes a Ginla as well. With the player profile we're talking about, with how much of a pro he is already, teams are going to be going after him in, in droves. And I don't think there's any chance that he goes past Calgary at number eight. So we're at least in the top 10 conversation and now in the top eight to and that really shakes up the draft order especially with how many defensemen were potentially available and going high I mean there's the chance that we could see Celebrini, Levshinov, Salayev, Dickinson, maybe even a Z Boom as well in there as Zane Parekh and then an Aginla perhaps I mean the draft order could go absolutely bananas but I'd love to know down below do you guys see him ending up number eight to Calgary do you see him going up further than that earlier in the draft in the five to seven range it's gonna be a wacky one here
But TJ Ginla has played himself up to this level and deserves the recognition that he has been getting, and it's been absolutely awesome to watch. And I want to know in the comments down below what do you guys think about TJ Ginla's game? How do you think he'll translate onto the next level? And where do you want to see him go in the draft? How far do you see him going up in the draft as well? I'd love to know all your thoughts down below. Of course, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you guys enjoy the scouting reports and all the prospect breakdowns. And click on this card right here for all my hockey prospect talk right in one playlist. Of course, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic hockey day, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.